Hi, and welcome back to the Beer Temple. I am Chris Quinn. We are, as a reminder, we are at the Shelton Brothers Festival in Louisville, Kentucky. Thanks so much to the Sheltons and everyone at Shelton Brothers for being super accommodating and also to Copper and Kings, which we are actually filming literally next to one of their stills, which is pretty amazing. And also, I wanted to give a special thanks to my guest, Danielle Thierrier. Thank yeah. you so much for coming on. You're it's awesome. Nice. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Yes. Very well. So, can you tell the people out there a little bit about your brewery and the styles of beer that you make? Um, I mean, I guess you guys consider yourself a farmhouse yep. brewery, right? Would you mind just talking a little bit about yeah, your brewery? So the first point is I, I started my brewery exactly 20 years ago. Okay. 1996, so we just celebrated our 20th anniversary. Congratulations. So it means it was at this time one of the first French uh, craft brewery. I mean, yes. it was really the beginning of the you know, revolution. So mm -hmm. I felt very lonely at this time. What made you want to open up a brewery in 1996? Right. So I used to work, at, uh, I used to be a human uh, resources manager yeah. in a big company. So I had a very good job, but I, I wanted to do something by myself, start my own business. I also wanted to live in the countryside, not in the city. Yeah. And to have a sort of different life, I mean, more independent, with, mm -hmm. um, closer to my family also. Well, mm -hmm. you know, to organize my life. And what happened, my wife is from Canada, and some of my family lives in uh, England, so okay. I happened to travel a little. And I noticed that, you know, the craft breweries were starting. Mm -hmm. And I, as I was born in the, the northern France, it's a, there's a tradition about beer, you know. So I was a, just a beer amateur. Or, yeah. But slowly, I, this, it seems was a good idea to become a brewer. So yeah. I started home brewing, of course. But it was very difficult at the time because yeah. no internet, no... But, Getting but, supplies was yeah, probably very so difficult. I found a couple of books in, in, uh, in Belgium because we are very close right. to Belgium. And I studied like this. And then when I really decided to start my own brewery, I went to Belgium again to get some training. And, uh, uh -huh. yeah. Wow. So, so a lot of people, we've talked about your beers on the show in the past. And we've talked about um, French style uh, Saison or yeah. French farmhouse sales, and I've I've mentioned that you may not uh, know Thierry or maybe you do, but I think a lot of people would know um, kind of the people call it the Thierry yeast or the French yeah. farmhouse yeast. So for a long time, you know, there were essentially two farmhouse yeasts that you could buy as a home brewer, and a lot of uh, professional brewers have kind of gone it, and a lot of people know the Dupont strain. And then there's also the Curie strain, which I'm, I'm guessing you would say is not really. I mean, are, how does it feel to be kind of one of the foundations uh, for home brewing uh, uh, worldwide for for this massive style? I mean, it really is. There's the Belgian strain, and then there's the French strain, which I believe is based on on your yeast, yeah. correct? Yeah, it's. Yeah, it's based on it. It's, it's a long story, so okay. I, I'm surprised about it. You know, it was not on purpose. Just what I know is when I started, I worked a lot about, uh, to select the yeasts, so, um, which were uh, well, to, uh, appropriate, I mean. Yeah. So it's, now it's a house yeast, so I've been working with it for almost 20 years yeah. now. Uh, it gives a signature, signature to my yeah. beers. Because in northern France, the tradi traditional beers are called Bière de Garde. Yeah. So they are kind of saison, but stronger usually, mm -hmm. and more on, on the malt side. Yes. And not so, so much on the yeast side, you know. Uh, I, I love Dupont. It's one of my favorite beers. Yeah. Uh, saison Dupont and Moinette. Uh, so I wanted to something really special from the yeast character. So I've worked a lot with that. And then working and working, uh, with this yeast, you know, mm -hmm. uh, I learned more, um, and then it happens that some brewers were inspired by it, yeah. and I'm very happy with that. Yeah, Absolutely, sure. yeah. and I think more and more people are making their saison in more of the Thierry style, which I would say is very dry, yeah. uh, 
How would you? Well, why don't you describe the the yeah, Curie the, signature? The thing is to get some yeah dry beers, no and no sugar left, very drinkable. Yeah. Uh, but with some you know uh, flavors, uh, it could be some floral mm -hmm. or honey sometimes or green apple. Mm -hmm. in, very complexity also. Uh -huh. So I want my beer to be yeah drinkable and dry, complex, and uh, also I like hops very much. Yeah. But not in extreme. So I want to balance you know the taste between all this, and I do also use some spices, but very little. Oh, okay. Because yeah. I was going to say there is like a, a peppery, spicy character yeah, to some so of your beers. Yeah. So the peppery, spicy. Most of that comes from the yeast. Yeah, that's what I would have thought. Yeah, yeah. in the dark ales I brew, uh, I also use very little spices. But anyway, that's in, the purpose is to give some complexity to the beer. You yeah. Know? Nothing obvious, but just nice uh, fitting. I've talked to some brewers in the past who say, if you can taste a specific ingredient, you use too much of it. Yeah, yeah, exactly what I think. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not a big fan of you know heavy. I don't know cinnamon like yeah. uh, beers, you know flavor. Mm -hmm. um, I think you you get tired very quickly of this kind of yeah. beers. You know your mouth is full of the yeah. same flavor, so it may be fun for one or two sip. But then, a nice beer is one you is a beer when you finish your your glass, you you would like to to get another one. Yeah, you know? absolutely. But so what I think. So in 1996 versus. Uh, now to 20 years later, how have you seen the uh, market for your beers and the consumers of your beers change in that time? I'm sure it's drastically different. Yes, it's, it's has changed drastically, but it's, it started well. You know, when I started, people were very surprised, as I said, but local people, because they didn't know anything about craft beer, but still, as people like beer, drink beer in Northern France, you yeah. know, every day, or so I had. No, not no, no problem to to have to find consumers. I mean, you know, yeah. I, uh, I could sell the beer uh, very quite quickly. They were a bit surprised about the, the hoppiness of the, and uh, it, it went well. But then, of course, it everything changed. Yeah, and in a good way. So, um, as you know, so we are we we are trying to grow to grow to brewery, but very slowly. Mm -hmm. So I want to keep it small. Yeah. How many people are at your brewery right so now? So we are six people. Okay. And we brew about 2,500 hectoliters. Hectoliters, here, okay. Which is not much. No. Uh, as I say, it's growing slowly. Yeah. Uh, I don't want it like this. So we are in a, in a village, and the, the building, I mean, the, the place used to be a brewery in, in the okay. past. So I want to keep it, I mean, sort of traditional local brewery. And I know that recently, I don't know if you've started brewing it recently, but recently in the United States we started getting uh, some, uh, is it fooder beers or some wood fermented yeah. beers? Can yeah. you talk a little bit about that program? Yeah, so I, I started this uh, maybe 10 years ago. Okay, uh, there you go. Yeah. But very slowly, just a few barrels and so far I only use one, one kind of barrels coming from southern France, Côte du Rhône, so red okay. wine barrels. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to have so too, too many different, you know, I want to learn how to manage these barrels. And where are the barrels coming from, I'm sorry? Uh, Côte du Rhône. Oh, oh okay, uh, yeah, Côte du Rhône. South of yeah. Le, southern Absolutely. Uh, red wines. And I, I, I was able to get fresh barrels containing wine and I just age, well, starting aging my beer, some of my beers. But it was only a few barrels, so yeah. the Shadow Brothers insisted to, to get some. And it's I say, delicious. Sorry, yeah. you have to wait because I don't have enough. You know, okay. It's, they're very limited yeah. uh, quantities. So now I'm able to expand a little this program, but st it's still small. Okay. Uh, I just um, bought a fooder yeah. from the same origin, but, oh. but a big one. Yeah. Not, so in the future, I, hopefully, I will have a little okay. more. Okay. But, um, I don't have much room either, so I have a new building, but it's not huge, no. Okay. So I have to deal with uh, what I have. Okay. Uh, so little by little, you'll probably expand this wood fermentation Yeah, wood program. fermentation for the dark ale. I also I already started uh, some bread season, as okay. we, you can see so many here. Yes. But, uh, same, I'll tr I try to balance the beer. I, I don't want the bread character be too strong. Mm -hmm. uh, 
So yeah, I'm studying this. But I'm, I'm very slow, you know, it, it takes time. Yeah, well, I mean, so far, so good. Is there anything that you have been inspired by that's happening on in the U.S. side of things, or are you just kind of focused on your own thing in France? Oh, no, I'm also influenced, you know, the, the influences goes uh, both way, of course. Mm -hmm. and for instance, uh, I'm not a big fan of IPAs, but I do like fresh IPAs. And the first time I had some double IPA, I was very impressed yeah. from West Coast. So I, uh, I started brewing a double IPA. Oh, really? Yeah. So I, I don't ship it to the US because right. it would be ridiculous. But yeah, I do brew a double IPA. Really? But it's my, my style. I mean, it's more, more again, more balanced. Yes. Uh, it has got more body, but, uh, mm -hmm. but still, yeah. Uh, okay. I was so impressed by these beers, uh, I said I have to do something. That's in, amazing. Yeah. Are you using your house yeast for these? No, I, use a, okay. you know, I use a different Like a, a standard uh, yeah, like US, West Coast Ale yeast US, or something yeah. like that? Exactly. Awesome. That's great. And also, uh, another thing, uh, for, for a while I wanted to brew a very low alcohol, sort of a table beer. Yeah. So I was thinking about that, and once I happened to taste the Petit Prince from Just a King. Yes, so wonderful we, beer. We, we were friends, and so we decided to, to brew my own version of Petit Prince, but mm -hmm. the, the original recipe is from them. So they came over at the brewery, and now it's Petit Princess in French. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's sort of a yeah cousin of Petit uh, Just a King yeah. Petit Prince, and a wonderful drinkable. Very light, but very complex, the yeah. Petit Prince, but you yeah. can drink it on and on. Yeah, it's my wife's uh, favorite beer now. Uh, the Princess. <laughs> yes. Oh, awesome. Because it's very low alcohol. Very, we, we dry hop a lot with Saz, uh, so check okay. hops. Yeah. So it's very nice, yes. Is any of that going to see uh, get shipped over, or is that all staying in No, it, it, uh, so far it's all staying in, in, in Europe. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like it would have been nice. Um, well, uh, thank you so much, Danielle, for sitting down and talking. I've been an admirer of your beers for, for quite a while. Thank you. And I really appreciate what you guys are doing, and I'm with you, kind of slow and steady. And for those of you who've had the uh, Curie Farmhouse beers, um, the, uh, the Extra and the Blonde, uh, this the new fooder beer, the wood fermented beer, I should say. W yeah. What's the name of it? What do you? Vieille Brune. Vieille Brune is exceptionally good. It is if you see it, pick it up and try it. It's very different from any of the other stuff I've had from yeah. Trier, and it is very, different. very, very delicious and very well made. So thank you again, Daniel. Okay, I just had one thing that yeah. uh, visitors are always well welcome. Oh, okay. The sorry. brewery is very close to the Belgian border, as I mentioned, so it's very easy to get there. We have a nice uh, tap room and we have uh, guest rooms. Oh, so we have we get more and more uh, visitors from all over, but especially from the U.S. Yeah, uh, I like that. I enjoy that very much. So, absolutely. Anybody uh, just send us an email and uh, stop in and out. say hi. Exactly. Well, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Bye -bye. Thank you guys very much as well uh, for watching us. Again, thanks to Shelton Brothers and Copper and Kings, and obviously to uh, Danielle Thierry. But until next time, so long. Cheers. Cheers. Okay, thank you so much.